convinced with sham wow. You'll be saying wow every time you use this towel. It's like a chamois, it's like a towel, it's like a sponge. John here from opticianworks.com. You're gonna be saying wow every time you use this lens meter. It's like a friend, it's like a coworker, it's like an all-in-one toolbox. Single vision, of course. Line bifocals, bring them on. Progressives, go for it. Hey, it even runs on batteries. You can use this thing in your car. Made in Japan, you know they make good stuff. So act now. Welcome to the first in our series on let's learn how to use the lens meter. Make sure you watch this all the way through to the end for a special TV offer. The Marco LM101 is the most common lens meter in use in our industry today. So it is vitally important that you know how to use it. There are gonna be all kinds of things I'm saying and talking about here that you're gonna have any idea what I'm talking about, none. Don't worry about that. Worry about learning the parts, kind of watch what I'm doing, how I'm handling this, and then we'll jump into the kits, and then we'll start really learning the nuts and bolts pieces of how you work with the lens meter. But first things first, baby steps, foundation, you know me. One of the great things about the newest model of the LM101 is that it can be plugged in or it can be run off of batteries. To access the batteries, remove the four screws on the bottom plate, and you'll see where that compartment is to load up your 2D batteries. Okay, we've decided on which power source we're gonna use. We're either gonna plug it in or we're gonna run it off of batteries. Regardless, the next thing we need to do, of course, is uh, turn on the lens meter. The on-off switch is located on the side here. Just use it to turn the lens meter on and off. Next step is kind of setting the lens meter up for your own personal use. The first step in that is using this, which is the position locking lever. And obviously it does just that. It allows you to adjust this so that it's comfortable for you to use. You might be tall, you might be short, you might be sitting, you might be standing. Find a spot that's right for you and then lock it down. Now I need to set it up for my individual eyesight. There are some very specific steps involved here that you're going to want to memorize because if you don't do these before you go jumping into verification or layout work during any practical exam, you're not going to pass. So pay attention to this. You start to focus a lens meter for individual use by having it turned off. I take a sheet of white paper and I rest it against this point right here, which is the lens stop. The lens stop is kind of the most important place on a lens meter. It's actually the point from which all of the measurements are made. The other thing I'm gonna be adjusting when I'm doing uh, my setup for my individual eyesight is the power drum. The power drum is an old fashioned number line put on a wheel. You don't read prescriptions off the drum. You read the powers off the drum and then you use those numbers to calculate the prescription. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get into that in coming lessons. But for now, this is the power drum. There's a power drum index. Your plus numbers are shown in black. Your minus numbers are shown in red. The LM101 is kind of unique in that it has a power adjustment for your left-hand person and your right-hand person too. Place your white sheet of paper against the lens stop. All it does is push some light up into here, which is the eyepiece. And the eyepiece is made up of four individual items. The outermost one is this, is an eye cup, and the eye cup is a soft rubber ring. It blocks light from entering the tube so that I can see things inside a little bit clearer. It protects the outermost lens of the eyepiece against damage. And of course, if you wear glasses, it keeps your glasses front surface from hitting the outside of this, which is the individual adjustment knob. And we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Other pieces that make up this tube are the chrome knurled sleeve, which if nothing else is a really cool name. What this does is control a what's called the reticle. And the reticle is something that you see when you look inside the instrument. There's a picture of it. 
And we'll talk about how you use that in a whole lot more depth when we get to how you actually work with the lens meter. The last piece that makes up the eyepiece, or the eyepiece tube, is the PCD, or the prism compensation device. And this is used in a couple of different ways. We'll cover those in the how to use section rather than this overview. So what we're doing right now is adjusting the lens meter for individual use. I have rested my piece of paper against my lens stop. I'm gonna take my individual focus knob or focus ring, and I am going to wind it full counterclockwise out until it stops. I'm gonna look inside with my eye resting against that eye cup, and I'm gonna slowly turn this clockwise until the reticle inside is nice, crisp, and clear. I like using the one prism indicator. I'm not rocking, I'm only turning clockwise. Once that's sharp, I can remove my sheet of white paper. I can turn the lens meter on. I take my power drum and I rotate it into the high plus. I just threw it up and around plus seven. I'm gonna look inside and I'm gonna slowly turn my power drum away from me until my sphere lines and my cylinder lines are crisp and sharp. Again, no rocking, just like this. I'm only turning it away from me. Once I'm sharp inside and I look down at my power drum, I look at my power drum index, and what do I have? I have a perfect zero. If I have a perfect zero, that means that the instrument is in fact now adjusted for my eyesight. If it's a quarter plus, a quarter minus, try it again, try it without your glasses, and you may just simply have a situation where you're always gonna be a quarter strong or a quarter weak. And just make sure that you account for that and don't go rejecting work that is actually perfectly okay. I just got a job here for Mr. Roth. He's waiting. I've got these lenses in stock. I'm gonna lay these out so I can finish them, pop them into a frame and send Mr. Roth on his way. We're gonna start learning a few new parts here, so pay attention. This particular lens is a plus 225, minus 25 at 90. So in order to start this setup, I'm gonna turn my power drum to plus 225. I'm gonna rotate my axis wheel, which we will look at in depth in upcoming lessons, to 90. I'm going to rest my lens against the lens stop that we're familiar with, but now we're introducing a new item. This is the lens holder. This is the gimbal. And this is the lens holder handle. You're going to want to practice using this. I think the best technique is the thumb up here and the finger down here. You don't want this slamming into the lens. You might damage the lens. You might damage the lens stop. You might damage the gimbal. Get a lens that doesn't matter so much and just practice how that feels so you get the hang of it. The gimbal is just a unique device that allows movement in multiple directions. It has a rubber ring on the front so it kind of grabs the front of the lens. They do wear out over time, so if it does get dried out, replace it and that lens will be held in place much better again. I forgot to mention that the lens stop is also something that can be replaced should it become damaged. So what I would do is I would take my lens holder level, release it, my lens holder against the front of the lens. The gimbal holds it in place against the lens stop. I'm already on axis, I'm on power. The next part is the marking pen lever. This controls the marking pens. The marking pens are a set of three pre-inked pens that place three dots on the front of the lens. The center dot locates your optical center when you've done everything right here. The two outer dots act as orientation or reference points so that the lens stays in the correct position throughout the entire finishing process. Okay, I think we just have a few items left to go here. One of them is the filter switch. Uh, if you move this, what you see inside when you're looking into the eyepiece changes. One setting is a dark green, green yellow. The other is a white, white orange. And you'll find that certain lenses that are really heavily tinted, certain polarized lenses. Sometimes you can see the reticle and your target and work with things a little bit easier with one setting or the other. Last thing that's left after that is the spectacle table. 
The spectacle table is controlled by this, which is the spectacle table lever. And what it's used for is, let's say I'm, I'm checking this job in, it came back from the lab, and I'm making sure that the power is right in it and everything's lined up good. What the spectacle table does is assure that both eye wires are resting on the same plane. Because of this spectacle table being in the perfect plane in alignment with the rest of the instrument, if I rotate this, change this, move this from right to left, everything stays in the proper position to make sure that what I'm seeing is what I'm reading and that I'm passing or failing a job against a set of standards. This particular spectacle table does have a scale with it. Um, most lens meters don't even have one anymore. Some people do use it as a rough gauge for centering blanks or a rough idea of heights, but it's not really accurate enough, accurate enough to use it for pass fail criteria. All right, I think we have a good idea now what the parts make up the lens meter. Now we can actually get into the real nuts and bolts of how we use it. That's when we're gonna break out our Learn the Lens Meter kit. Act within the next 20 minutes. Come on, we can't do this all day. We'll throw in free shipping. Here's how to order. Visit OpticianWorks.com. That's OpticianWorks.com. OpticianWorks is not available in stores and is made in the USA. Beware of OpticianWorks imitators. Visit OpticianWorks.com. That's OpticianWorks.com. Visit now.